Well, hello. This is Harbord Street at the south end of Bickford Park. Now, you might be wondering, why is there a railing beside the sidewalk when the ground is level on both sides? Because this is a bridge over a creek. Let's dive in. This bridge opened in 1914 to carry Harbord Street over Garrison Creek. Here's a photo of the bridge under construction in 1910. It didn't last long as a normal bridge. The ground nearby started being filled just a few years later, and by the 1930s, both sides were filled in. As you can see as the camera swings around, most of Bickford Park itself is still ravine. It's just the area beside the bridge that was filled. Garrison Creek is one of Toronto's lost rivers. I mentioned a few others in my video on Toronto's shoreline. There's a magic link to that video in the top right, and it's in the description too, so you can find it once you finish watching this video. Garrison Creek arose in the area of St. Clair and Dufferin. It ran through Christie Pits, just north of here, and then headed south toward our next stop. We're near the northwest corner of Trinity Bellwoods Park. In the background at the top of the hill is Crawford Street. You'll note that the ground in the park is lower than the surrounding area. This is another part of the valley of Garrison Creek, and Crawford Street has another buried bridge. Here's a photo from 1915 when it opened. It was buried in the 1960s with fill from the construction of the Bloor Danforth subway. Both railings on this bridge have since been removed, so unlike the Harbord Street Bridge, it no longer looks like a bridge. The creek headed southeast through the park toward its mouth just east of Fort York. Here's a map of this part of its path today. Have you ever wondered why Niagara Street doesn't follow the street grid? Well, it followed the banks of the creek. And if you don't know, now you know. The creek began to be diverted into sewers and to have its original course filled in around the 1870s and by the 1920s, it no longer existed on the surface. And if you can hear in the background that drum circle, it smells exactly like you think. And now, as they say, move along, nothing to see here. And here we are on Summerhill Avenue, just east of Young Street. And look, another road with railings for no apparent reason. But in this video, not everything is as it seems. Many of Toronto's waterways have had their courses altered over the years, and in many cases, they flow underground through storm sewers, and any water on the surface is not the original river. But back to this. Yes, this is a buried bridge, but it's not over a river. This is a bridge over the Young Street subway. When the subway was constructed in the 1950s, the section between Summerhill and St. Clair ran in a cut on the surface. If you've ever looked out the train windows in this section, you may have noticed that the profile of the tunnel has sloped sides, unlike the rectangular profile of cut and cover tunnel sections and the circular profile of board tunnel sections. And if you don't know, now you know. Let's move along. This is Philosopher's Walk on the University of Toronto campus. We're heading south from Bloor Street and as you can see, we're descending into a valley. This is the valley of Tattle Creek. Tattle Creek originated near Witchwood Park in the St. Clair and Bathurst area. The creek began to be buried even before 1860, and it had mostly disappeared by the 1880s. There were lots of reasons to bury these streams. They tended to cause floods. They were often used as open sewers, which was not very nice for anybody nearby. And in a growing city, of course, if you fill in the valleys of streams, you get more land to build on. Many of these streams still sort of exist underground. Some of them were converted into storm sewers as they were buried, and some of them exist as areas with high water tables or areas that mysteriously flood from time to time. And here we are a little farther south at Hart House Circle. That's the Ontario Legislative Building behind me on the other side of Queen's Park Crescent. This is also the valley of Tattle Creek, which is why 
Queens Park Crescent is at a higher level than this ground. And if you don't know, wait, do I really have to keep doing that? We are in Lytton Park near Glencairn Avenue and Avenue Road. These tennis courts are in a valley. You want to guess why? This is part of the former course of Mud Creek, which originated in the area of Downsview Park. Very little of Mud Creek is visible on the surface anymore, although it does emerge in the Moore Park Ravine. I covered that in my Beltline Trail video. There's a magic link up there. It flows into the Don River near the brickworks. We are in the Chatsworth Ravine, west of Young Street, a few blocks south of Lawrence Avenue, and this is Burke Brook. As I had mentioned earlier, many of these streams have been converted into storm sewers. Burke Brook is an example of a stream that runs on the surface in some areas and is a storm sewer in others. It's emerging from a storm sewer here for a short run on the surface before heading back underground, as you can see in this photo. Its alter ego name is the North Toronto Storm Trunk Sewer. Let's follow its ravine to the east side of Young Street. This bridge is Mount Pleasant Road, crossing a ravine just north of Blythewood Road. And on the other side of that bridge, this is Burke Brook, emerging from its storm sewer. It looks a lot like this, which is Burke Brook emerging from its storm sewer, just a little bit upstream from here. It continues southeast from here. To Sunnybrook Park, north of Eglinton Avenue between Bayview Avenue and Leslie Street, where Burke Brook finally flows into the West Don River. Staying in the Sunnybrook area, we're here in Howard Talbot Park. Behind me is the intersection of Bayview and Eglinton. As you can see, the park is below street level. And if you've ever driven along Eglinton through this area, you may have noticed that both to the east and the west, the ground is higher. This is the valley of Walmsley Brook. It originated uh, near the area of Young and Eglinton. And from here, it flows generally east toward Thorncliffe Park. So let's head out that way. This is the west branch of the Don River, just north of Overly Boulevard. And right around here, on the far side, you can just see the mouth of Walmsley Brook, where it flows into the Don. If you've driven between Thorncliffe Park and the industrial area of Leeside on Beth Nielsen Drive, you may have noticed there's a ravine on either side of the road. That's also Walmsley Brook. This is the Cedarvale Ravine, just north of St. Clair West Subway Station. This ravine is part of the path of Castle Frank Brook, which originates in the area of Dufferin and Lawrence. Heading south of the station, the Brook's path continues southeast through Nordheimer Ravine, seen here near Bathurst and Spadina. And then through the Rosedale Ravine into the Don River, just south of the Prince Edward Viaduct. If you're interested in the Prince Edward Viaduct, I have a video on that too. Now remember I said not everything is as it seems. In some parts of the valley here, there's water flowing on the surface, but it's not Castle Frank Brook. Castle Frank Brook only flows through the storm sewers here. Any water on the surface is just surface runoff which eventually joins the storm sewer system. Here we are on Brookview Drive in the Lawrence and Bathurst area. Now, if you've been paying attention to this video, and I hope you have, you might already have guessed why a street with the word Brook in its name would curve, as you see behind me and in this map. This street runs alongside the former path of Yellow Creek, just over there, on its way southeast from Downsview. Now, 
in this part of the city, there's nothing on the surface that uh, shows Yellow Creek anymore. However, a few kilometers downstream from here, if you've ever walked on the Beltline Trail between Forest Hill and Davisville, you've walked through the valley of Yellow Creek. Part of that is in my Beltline Trail video, which I mentioned earlier. Now, let's head farther down the path of Yellow Creek and pick it up farther south. This is David Balfour Park near St. Clair Subway Station, and this is Yellow Creek, flowing on the surface through this section. It's also fed by some of the storm sewers in the area, as are so many watercourses in Toronto. Farther downstream, in the Park Drive Reservation area, it goes back underground in a storm sewer and ultimately flows into the Don River just north of the viaduct. And at that, I think we'll call it a day. I hope you've enjoyed this exploration of some of Toronto's lost rivers. If you do, Please follow the instructions on the closing credits, like and subscribe, and enjoy the music.